Good afternoon, everyone. I actually don't know this time of day if it's good afternoon or good evening, so I'm going to go 18th century style and say good day. Um, my name is Beth Kelly, and I get the honor to serve as the Vice President for Research, Training, and Program Design here at the Foundation. And I've been here for 35 years, so I know we have some long-standing uh, members in the teaching community who have had long-standing careers as well. And I think you understand why we stay in this and what feeds us day in and day out. We are educators just like you. Um, what might be a little surprising to you is that we are getting ready to celebrate our 100th anniversary of Colonial Williamsburg in, I know. <laughs> That will be in 2026. And when you look at the early intentions of the restoration, it wasn't clear what they were going to do with these restored buildings. Uh, in fact, our founder or visionary, Dr. W.A.R. Goodwin, wrote our funder, John D. Rockefeller Jr., and said, you know, we're building these monuments to the past. Um, and we have these beautiful gardens where people can contemplate the past but we're not connecting them to the past. And we need to breathe life into the past and raise the voices of those that were here before. And I think that is really how it began for us to have costume tour guides and programming, et cetera. And that's really what you all do on a day in and day out basis. You breathe life, you connect people, you connect people to subjects, and that's what we do here as well at Colonial Williamsburg. So we are very, very honored to have you here for this very important occasion. Uh, we welcome you, and just like you, we're always trying to figure out new ways to engage audiences, just like you trying to new and engage new learners. We have new things that are happening all the time, new discoveries, so we hope as your neighbor that you're coming and finding those things out uh, as you visit with us day in and day out. But I, as, as an educator, could stand here all night, as <laughs> you know that, a little bit talkative. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over. Just wanted to, again, welcome you to Colonial Williamsburg and welcome you to this evening. And I will pass it off to Sarah Ortega. Thank you. I will follow suit and say good day. <laughs> and welcome to the 2024 Teacher of the Year celebration. I'm Sarah Ortigo, Chair of the Williamsburg James City County School Board. On behalf of my colleagues, I'm honored to welcome you all here tonight. I'd like to introduce you to my colleagues, so would you each stand as I call your name. Mrs. Andrea Donner, Vice Chair. <laughs> Mrs. Kim Hundley, Parliamentarian. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Cavazos. Ms. Amy Chen. Mr. Michael Hosang. Mr. Randy Riffle. Together with other local elected officials, we partner to serve our community. Thank you for your support and for joining us tonight to celebrate our excellent teachers. If you could please stand as I call your name. Our congressional Official is Joe Schumacher representing Re Representative Rob Whitman. <laughs> State officials here this evening are Senator Danny Diggs, <laughs> Delegate Amanda Batten, <laughs> and joining us from the James City County Board of Supervisors, Chair Ruth Larson. Vice Chair Jim Eisenhower, John McLennan, Barbara Knoll, and Administrator Scott Stevens. And representing the Williamsburg City Council, Mayor Douglas Pons, Vice Mayor Pat Dent, Stacey kern -Shearer. Barbara Ramsey, and City Manager Andrew Trivet. I would also like to thank our gracious hosts, Colonial Williamsburg. The art museums of Colonial Williamsburg are such a treasure right here in our backyard, 
and we're honored to celebrate our school division's finest in such a dignified location. And finally, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Owen Heron, Superintendent of WJCC Schools. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Ms. Ortego, and good evening, everyone. It is my privilege to be with you this evening as we recognize our outstanding Teachers of the Year. Celebrating our teachers' contributions is one of the greatest joys of my job. You will be introduced tonight to the best and brightest the division has to offer, an already high bar that these honorees clear with ease. Gathered together tonight, we recognize our master educators. Our teacher honorees create energy and excitement in their classrooms. They forge caring relationships. They are adaptable at navigating new and different challenges and they possess a repertoire of strategies to engage and advance even reluctant learners. As superintendent, I am extremely proud of the dedication and hard work of each of you, our teachers of the year. Your commitment to your students, your colleagues, your community, our community, and the profession is truly incredible. You make me very proud. While I will soon be called up individually, individually, let's first recognize this whole group of educators together. Teachers of the Year, please stand. <laughs> I would also like to recognize all previous Teachers of the Year present this evening. If you are a past Teacher of the Year for WJCC Schools, Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Tonight we also celebrate the support we receive from our community. Having exceptional educators is more meaningful with a steadfast, passionate wave of support uplifting our work. And the attendance tonight is representative of that. But we are also privileged to have the WJCC Schools Foundation at our side as supporters and partners in serving our community. In addition to their years of spurring new classroom initiatives by awarding innovative learning grants, the WJC Schools Foundation became the title sponsor of the Teacher of the Year Awards in 2022. I'm deeply grateful to the Foundation for continuing in this role and I'd like to invite the WJC Schools Foundation board members to please stand and be recognized as your name is called. As a signal of their steadfast, uh, as a signal of their steadfast support, the foundation is well represented here tonight, and I would ask you to hold your applause until all names are called. Stephen Felker, Alyssa Harrison, Kim Hundley, Jan Leslie, Grayson Moore, James Mullins, Patty O'Neill, Penny Pooley, Bud Robeson, Ginny Sneed, and Michael Willen. Thank you for your support of our teachers and being here this evening. At this moment, I'd like to invite Mrs. Penny Pooley, Chair of the WJCC Schools Foundation, to come forward to share some remarks. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, the WJCC Schools Foundation believes that the recognition of Teachers of the Year is one way we accomplish our mission to enrich, inspire, and innovate public school classrooms. And we happily extend our heartfelt congratulations to each of you being awarded the 2024 WJC Schools Teacher of the Year recognition. This award is a testament to your ability to cultivate a nurturing and inclusive learning environment where every student feels valued and supported. Beyond the curriculum, you have instilled lessons of integrity, resilience, and compassion to your students, shaping not only their academic success, but also their character values. 
Your tireless efforts to inspire, motivate, and empower students to reach their fullest potential have not gone unnoticed. Through your innovative teaching methods, compassionate mentorship, and genuine care for each student, you have transformed classrooms into vibrant hubs of learning and growth. Moreover, your leadership within the school community has been instrumental in fostering a culture of collaboration, creativity, and continuous improvement. Your willingness to go above and beyond to support your colleagues and contribute to the collective success of the school exemplifies your exceptional leadership qualities. So on behalf of the WJCC Schools Foundation, we present you with monetary recognition and a commemorative medallion that you can display in your classrooms for years to come as you reflect on this honor and the enduring leg legacy you leave behind. Wishing you continued success, fulfillment, and joy in your journey as an educator. Congratulations. And Dr. Herring. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pooley. We are so fortunate to have the foundation, a true partner in education, champion our teachers now and in the future. Our outstanding Teachers of the Year are teacher leaders who drive education and learning home across our division every single day. They are shaping the leaders of tomorrow in our community. Let's get to know them a little better. Please turn your attention to the screen. If I could have a superpower, I would not sleep ever. And I would just be able to get everything done at night and not have to sleep. I would like to be able to do things even faster than I already do. I do try to find ways to be efficient so that I can move on and get through with other things. To be able to read faster. I'm a slow reader, so it's always been a struggle to through all of my education and to read at a faster pace. So read faster. <laughs> Probably a fluency in a different language, in another language. Um, right now, you know, English is my third language, so I'd like to know more. If I could have any superpower, it would be to fly, because um, my dad is a pilot, and so he's like instilled this love of flying for me. Um, so I would love to just be able to like pick up and fly whenever, and yeah, I think it'd be cool to see the world too from a different perspective. The best piece of advice I have ever received as a teacher would be um, to prioritize what's really important, don't feel like you need to try to do everything, and to be very present with your students in whatever you're doing with them. Take bubble baths on Wednesday is one of the best pieces of advice I got from my mentor my first year teaching and it was just, you have to take a moment for yourself when you're a teacher, so pick whatever day it is, it doesn't have to be Wednesdays, but don't do any work that evening, take a second for yourself because you can't, um, you know, fill other cups from an empty one. To take it as it comes and to deal with things in a moment instead of worrying about it beforehand. First concert I ever attended was Bruce Springsteen at the old school Giant Stadium, which is now MetLife. Uh, uh, new kids on the block. <laughs> it was the Flock of Seagulls, and you 2 opened for the Flock of Seagulls. That was my very first concert that I paid for on my own. The second one was Rick James. <laughs> yeah, buried music. An Amy Grant concert. So I'm aging myself. <laughs> um, I went and saw um, Amy Grant in a Christmas concert. If I could eat only one meal for the rest of my life, this is an easy one. This would be McDonald's french fries, hands down. It is my absolute favorite food. All of my students know this. Um, if it was my last meal on earth, it would be McDonald's french fries. Pizza. It's pizza. All the way. Always. <laughs> and there's so many different ways that you can do, like, you can make breakfast pizza. You can make lunch pizza. You can make dinner pizza. So, chicken, pepperoni, veggie. So, definitely pizza would be my dish of choice cheese enchiladas and chips and salsa. So that's, <laughs> that's it. Part of me wants to say tacos, 
um, because I feel like they're very versatile as far as like you can put all kinds of protein in a taco, right? Different kind of toppings, you could change it up. Um, you can have breakfast tacos and then you have like the, you know, typical lunch dinner taco. There is dessert tacos that you put ice cream in. Tacos all the way, yeah. If I could swap lives with a celebrity for the day, it would be Mary Berry. So Mary Berry is a baker from, or she's a celebrity judge on the Great British Bake Off. And I think she just has like such a quaint, lovely life. And I would just love to see what her life is like. Oh, Taylor Swift right now. I mean, she's so popular. It would be Taylor Swift. It would be Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. And I, I'm sitting here waiting for me to come up with a different answer. Taylor Swift. That's an easy one because uh, she's Taylor Swift. So 100%. This is what our teachers bring every day to the classroom. Not just a passion for learning, but warm hearts and, and a wonderful sense of humor shine through. It is obvious why our students love you and why you have such tremendous success in your classroom. Thank you. It is now my greatest pleasure to introduce WJCC School's 2024 Teachers of the Year. Mrs. Pooley and Ms. Ortego, if you would please join me again on the stage. Teachers, as your name is called, please join us up front to be recognized and remain on stage until all honorees have been called. From Bright Beginnings, Rachel Tuttle. From Clara Bird Baker Elementary School, Jesse Workinger. From J. Blaine Blayton Elementary School, Catherine Weiss. <laughs> From James River Elementary School, Christine Hanlon. From Laurel Lane Elementary School, Jesse Minter. <laughs> From Matoka Elementary School, McKenna Coughlin. From Matthew Whaley Elementary School, Anya Br Br Braganski. <laughs> From Norge Elementary School, Mary Ann Cummins. <laughs> From Stonehouse Elementary School, Michelle Ruta. <laughs> <laughs> 
from Berkeley Middle School, Lena White. This is when everybody wishes they sat near the front. <laughs> From James Blair Middle School, Adrian Thornblum. <laughs> From Lois Hornsby Middle School, Laura Bedette. From Lafayette High School, Allison Knuckles. <laughs> From Warhill High School, Caitlin Ockenbaugh. Among all the deserving building teachers of the year, three exceptional honorees were chosen as WJCC Schools Level Teachers of the Year. First welcome, our High School Teacher of the Year is from Jamestown, Evelyn Witt. Evelyn, please come forward. And our middle school teacher of the year is from Tuano, Tamika Glover. And finally, it gives me great pleasure to bring forward the DJ Montague Teacher of the Year, the elementary level teacher of the year, and WJCC Schools Division Teacher of the Year, Sarah Raypatch. On behalf of WJCC Schools, I would like to thank each one of you for your commitment to excellence and the contributions you make in and out every single day of the year. We truly appreciate you and honour you this evening. One more clap for the group, please. Now we're going to take a moment for a quick photograph of the whole group in this beautiful setting. So hold tight and we will move back to the program in just a moment or two. As long as we can see everybody, we're good. <laughs> All right, 
Thank you. Beautiful. I would like to invite our Teachers of the Year to take a seat again, all of course except for Miss Raypatch. Well done. <clears throat> Sarah, as our Division Teacher of the Year, will now say a few words. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much, Dr. Heron, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking time out to honor the work of these amazing teachers. I am beyond grateful to my school, and the District Selection Committee for choosing me for this honor. My heart is overflowing with gratitude and humility to be standing in front of you all this evening. It is an honor to be recognized among this exceptional group of educators. I would like to congratulate all of my esteemed colleagues recognized tonight as Teachers of the Year throughout our WJCC School Division. Thank you for your dedication, your leadership, and your service to our children. Being recognized within our buildings by our colleagues who see us at our best and see us at our worst is beyond humbling. You are a blessing to our children and our entire community. And no amount of money or cute polo shirt, which is probably in that bag, <laughs> would ever be enough to demonstrate how important you are to our community. I would also like to express my deepest appreciation to my colleagues and dear friends at DJ Montague who deemed me worthy of this recognition. I love you all so much and go Mustangs. <laughs> About 25 years ago, I accidentally became a teacher. When I was a junior vocal performance major in college, one Sunday morning during church, a group of children got up and sang for us. I loved it so much. I went up to the children's director and told her I was a music major and I would love to help in any way I could. You would have thought the woman had just won the lottery. I, it looked to me like they had everything together. They were not gonna need me. I just went up because I liked it. But when you work with children long enough, you realize there will never be enough people, resources, or money for this job. We can always do more. So this church director gets excited and puts me in charge of a Christmas play and Wednesday night music and memory verse station. Woohoo! I was elated. I thought this was going to be so much fun. She then took me to this room that I'd be teaching in. Our church at the time was on this campground and the building we taught the children in was up like on this old hill. It was musty. It was old, it was empty, maybe the air and heat worked, maybe it didn't, sometimes that happens to us now. And she told me I could decorate my room any way I wanted. Now remember, I'm not a teacher yet, or elementary teacher yet, I didn't really think about it, but I really got excited about decorating a room. I mean, I was gonna be able to decorate a room and make it all cute and colorful. So I told my friends, a sweet older couple, about needing to decorate this room. And the wife came back to me with these larger than life crayons that I could decorate with, with bean bags. And so I had my theme, right? Primary colored dots, music notes all over the walls with bright curtains, bean bags. Even, oh, a sticker chart to keep track of all the amazing memory verses we were going to learn. And of course, my favorite part, those cute large crayons that she gave me. It was perfect. So while I was preparing the room, I decided to go into the elementary music learning lab at my university. I can't remember what I was looking for, but what I do remember is I found the elementary music curriculum and I sat there on the floor for the next three hours, just going through the materials and enjoying it more 
than one person ever should. I came home. I told my husband, Matt, who was going to seminary at the time, but was also a music major, and just left a very prominent job as a high school band director. I told him what I had just done for the last three hours. The sweet man looks at me, and he says, Sarah, that is weird. <laughs> no music major wants to be or gets excited about elementary music curriculum. So I think you might need to change your major. So there I was, a junior, changing my major and about to teach my first lesson at Wednesday night church. I remember the lesson so clearly. We were learning the memory verse. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I mean, the whole lesson was about love. I had a fun game, a song. The room was perfect. It was so cute. I was prepared. I was prepared, except for one thing. Christopher. <laughs> Christopher was this cute little boy, blonde hair, chubby, roly-poly, walks in. He's five years old. Glasses, I mean, the cutest little glasses. I, I mean, he would, perfect. He was just perfect. Now, I don't remember much after that. <laughs> Except that while I was trying to teach this game or song verse, you know, this verse about love, Christopher picks up that big, large crayon that I was so excited about. And he proceeds to whack me with it. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart. And he's hitting me. He's banging me, hitting me. And you see, now this girl that's standing there getting whacked, by a crayon I was so excited about, not anymore, not anymore. 25 years later is a teacher of the year. And you see, I had everything ready for a great lesson, but I was missing one most important compo component in that moment with Christopher. We didn't know each other. We had no relationship. I knew nothing about him. He knew nothing about me. But that changed. I got to know him, his parents, his siblings, and we became very dear friends. If there's one thing I've learned in my 25 years of working with children, it is that teaching is all about relationships. Relationships with your administrators, the staff, your colleagues, your families, your community, and of course the children that you teach. For almost 20 years, I have had the privilege of having over 2,800 young children come into my classroom to learn, play, and experience, and perform music. This award is a great honor, but this award is not a recognition of myself as an individual, but a recognition of a broader school community. I am unbelievably grateful for the collaboration and dedication of the administrators, teachers, staff, families, and students at DJ Montague Elementary. I'm a better educator and a person because of you. A school system is only as good as the support it receives from all shareholders in the community. And WJCC Public Schools has some of the best. Thank you so much to my bosses and administrators and partners and all the programming, mad programming madness that happens at our school, Scott and Nina. Thank you for creating an environment where your staff and students feel valued. DJ Montague is the best place for someone to work, especially if you're an elementary fine arts teacher. Scott, I love how much you value all programs and how you will work out anything with me so we can bring the big experiences to our little children. Thank you for being a great boss and a great friend and for being here tonight even though it's your birthday. Aww. Yeah, happy birthday. Thank you to my colleagues at DJ Montague. You are amazing and make even the worst days better. I'm honored to be representing some of my most favorite people in the entire world. You are all teachers of the year in my book. I especially wanted to highlight those who are always there for me for every program and every special thing that we try. Shannon, Catherine, Abby, Janelle, and Ashley. I am forever grateful for your dedication, sacrifice, and dear friendship. I would not be able to do anywhere near the stuff I do without you. 
Thank you to all the parents of the 2,800 students I've taught over the years for entrusting me with your most valuable treasures and for supporting music education in our schools. Lastly, thank you to my loving husband and our dear children, Abby, David, Nathan. You are the special secret to all my successes. Matthew, you sacrifice your gifts, energy, and time for anyone who needs you. You make everyone else to shine while you stand in the background. If any of us deserves this reward, it's really you. I can't do anything that I do without you there helping. Thank you for loving me, serving others, and being my best friend and support. In closing, let me tell you a little bit about Christopher now. He became, we became great friends with his whole family. He's grown now, married, plays multiple instruments. Our relationship grew, and he grew in his abilities, social skills, and maturity. I grew in my knowledge and skills, and I'm standing in front of you all 25 years later with hundreds of stories of more Christophers that I have had the privilege to watch grow. I survived the attack of the large crayon, <laughs> and it is because of everyone who has loved and supported me along the way. The community who supports its teachers and its children will be blessed. Thank you, WJCC schools, my friends, family, colleagues, and students for being a blessing to my life. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That was absolutely incredible. I think it almost reduces to tears at times, but just to know what you've put into the classroom over the last 25 years. I've had the opportunity to be in, in Sarah's classroom and watch her teach, and it really is an incredible experience. And I know she'd welcome you to come and see her in that environment, which is incredible. And I've also had the opportunity recently to watch one of the plays. She actually produces musical a full musical or a half musical at an elementary school and has everybody involved. Quite incredible in every way. Congratulations again. Congratulations one final time to our 2024 WJCC School Teachers of the Year. Before we adjourn for refreshments, I want to recognize the people in the room who were not on stage who helped make it possible for all of our Teachers of the Year to shine every day. Family and friends, we know school days are long and school years fly by. Thank you for sharing your loved one with our students. Principals, administrators, thank you for your support of our teachers every day and allowing them to blaze their own trail. We truly appreciate you as well. Thank you again to the Schools Foundation for your sponsorship and honoring our teachers this evening. And teachers, congratulations again and a heartfelt thank you for all you do for our students, families, and learning community. Refreshments are now available upstairs. If you exit the auditorium and return to the main entrance, you can't miss them. We will have central office staff along the way to help you navigate the journey. Thank you everyone for being here in support of WFJCC Schools. We could not do this without you. Have a wonderful evening and thank you. <laughs>